All right, so today I got all the parts for my new electrical connection for the Tesla. My situation is a little bit unique. First of all, we're renting this house. Second of all, that's the bathroom window there. And with temperatures getting a little bit colder, we want to make sure that gap just doesn't uh, sit there and electrical power doesn't come in from the bathroom. I ordered this NEMA 1450 adapter for the mobile connector, and that's going to replace what's going into the bathroom right now. As I said, we're renting, so I'm not mounting anything here. So let me show you what I'm what I'm going with. So this is the 20 foot cable I got from evsadapters.com and um it's got a little note with it so let me just let me just give you what this note says here so it says please note the neutral prong of the plug has been intentionally omitted to make the cord more versatile allowing plugging into three types of outlets nema 1430 1450 and 1460 electric vehicles only use ground and two lines for power the neutral is not used for EV charging. For many other applications, however, the neutral connection is needed to obtain a source for 120 volt power. Please do not attempt to use this cord for RV, electric range, or any application requiring a neutral connection. For electrical vehicle charging, however, you can be assured that the cord will work well and safely. My reasoning for doing this as a renter is I can take this cable with me and I can use it in other applications down the line. So here we're looking at the NEMA 1030 splitter. Here's the, the NEMA 1030 in a dryer uh, outlet. I'll show you, here's the dryer leaning over on its side. So there you got the 1030 outlet. So I went with the splitter so that we still have use of the dryer. So here we go is the, uh, that's going to replace the dryer plug. And then this will be where the dryer then goes into. And then here we have the 1450. And so this is what's going to run up to the Tesla. I'm still got to work out exactly how to play that. But my theory right now is I'm just going to draw a, a low amount of, amps from the Tesla because it's it is configurable I can set it to say just draw 12 mostly we're going to try not to run both of them at the same time all right so that's that connection there and that just runs right up the dryer pipe and out to the outside I've now reconnected the exhaust pipe and I've connected the power outlet from the dryer to the splitter and also the power is now running out to the garage. The little green cable there, I believe is a ground. Threw it on the ground. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it on the ground. If I understood right, and I'll have to check on that if that's really necessary, but I think that's in, in case of the ground, which is left off of this 20 foot extension cable. So I'm just gonna pack this away here and and then I'll go ahead back up and connect the, the Tesla for the first time. Things are back to normal here for the most part, but uh, you know, there is a little bit more going on here with wires and attachments. So it's sticking a little bit further off the wall. I might compensate it by moving the wash machine forward a little bit. And the nice thing here with this end is we've got a little LED telling us we are live. So now I can replace our old uh, plug here, our new 1450, and then we will give it a test charge. And it's a failure. We've got one red Tesla light here saying blink, blink. So on further review, I did have to come back and unwind the ground for the NEMA 1450. And so I have put this into the ground socket here. Let's see if that fixes the error with the mobile charger. I have now put the ground cable in, which is required for the NEMA 1450. I do remember reading that, that that's, that's kind of what they fixed with the old dryer standard. So let's plug this in once again. That's quite a plug-in. And look at that, that was it. Yes, you do need to have a ground running to your 1450 and a washer plug does not have a ground normally. That's, that's kind of the fault with the old 1030s. Now let's give this a test and plug it in. We're all green. Let's come over here and let's see, let's see what kind of life we get. The dryer's not running, so I'm just gonna see what it does if it uses the whole power. We're plugging in. 
and I'm doing my software update. So I got the software update. Now we are going to do the plug. Let's do it. And let's have a look. What are we getting? It says 32 amps. Wow, look at that. There it goes, right up to 32 amps. Wow. Nothing's blown. Lights aren't flickering. Oh my gosh. So we've done it. But let's see if I take this down a notch. Let's go down to 24. Six hours remain. That's still plenty. So I said I was going to do just 12. 12 is still double what I'm getting out of the wall outlet. Yeah, there you go. And I've been fine with the, the range out of the 120 outlet. It's really no big deal. Um, it's actually kind of fun, you know, when sometimes you're a few days behind of getting a full charge. It's now been a week since I've been using the 220 volt splitter from the basement on the 2021 Model Y. It's been working really great, but there's three things that I've learned and that really factor into why doing this is such a good idea. Let me take you through them. Firstly, with the 220 volt and up to 32 amps, I do have the ability to set my amperage right here. And every time I plug in, it just comes in and it, it's on the same setting. So every time I've plugged in this week, it just, defaults right to 12. But here's what I've realized is that, you know, effectively we have doubled our charge speed. You see here what was three to four miles an hour is now eight miles an hour. And that's just simply at 12 amps and 220, 240 volts. So I've sped up my charging time, which means that I'm just not needing that draw on current. And so the second realization, um, you know, the first one is that you can just set your charge current here and, you know, kind of keep, I mean, if I wanted it to be the same, I could set this down to six amps and then I'm just the same as a regular 110 charge. So the second realization is that obviously if you're charging faster, you can be home done with your charge before somebody even flips on the dryer. So if somebody's to kind of come and do the, the clothes drying in the morning, well, you know, you're already done with your charge uh, at night. So the, the nice thing about the extra voltage and the extra amperage is that you can get the charge done quicker and then dual use of the splitter just becomes less of an issue. And for the third realization, thanks to teslafy.com and check the notes to get a referral code for a free month of Teslafy. I was able to see the actual charging efficiency of home charging. So on 110 volts, the charging efficiency is around 80%. And so I was kind of like, what, what does that mean? Because once I switched here to the, to the 220, charging efficiency went up to 95%. So the way it shows is how much electricity used versus how much went into actually charging the batteries. So the way I've thought about it, and I'm going to have to do a little research to see if it's correct, but when you're charging your Tesla over a 24 hour period, you have things like the fan running, um, you're charging external systems. It's just not a very efficient charge because you've, you're using some of that trickle charge to keep some of the other systems going. When you do the 220 charge, you're just sending the power straight through, more of it's getting to the battery and you're not needing to power the you know other systems for quite as long. That's you know, that's my rough guess at where this efficiency gain comes in. But wherever it comes from, the difference is pretty substantial. 80% efficiency versus 95% efficiency. So if you guys had thoughts on just going with the mobile charger only on 110, listen, by any way that you can get the 220 volt, there's several reasons why it does make sense to go for it, even if you do the splitter. Now, I almost considered a more expensive switch and I'll show you that one. And I'm glad I didn't. I, you know, there might be a, a time where we blow a, blow a fuse or something like that. Um, but on a rental house without the need for an electrician, you know, we'll just take it easy. And I, I'm not going to worry too much about that, uh, the convenience of switching. I mean, $300 for the convenience of switching, uh, just not quite worth it for me. And, you know, the extra who knows how much for an electrician. So 
I think this is a good compromise as far as getting yourself 220 volts when you're not going to have a permanent setup. So I hope that was useful for you guys and we'll be back for more Tesla videos.